Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? Many constellations are obvious because of both the well-formed shape and the brightness of the stars in them, as with Orion. Others are more like, hey, there's some leftover stars between these bright ones. What do they look like? Um, a unicorn? That seems to be the case with dim, large, and not well-shaped Monoceros, but don't dismiss this area based on that. There's a lot to see here. Draw a line 10 degrees east from Orion's belt stars, stopping at fourth magnitude Gamma Monocerotis. In binoculars or finder scope centering that star or moving a bit more in that same direction, there's another similarly bright star, slightly above that line of directional movement. This is fourth magnitude Beta Monocerotis, a fantastic triple star system, but it's a rather tight triplet to split visually. The B and C stars are 590 times the Earth-Sun distance and take 4,200 years to orbit each other at just 2.8 arc seconds apart from our perspective. The A star is more than 2.5 times as far away from the closer pair and orbits both of them over a period of 14,000 years. That further distance makes it a bit easier to split at 7.4 arc seconds. Now, here's what's fascinating. These are all very young stars, less than 34 million years old. They weren't even a gleam in the sky when dinosaurs ruled the Earth. And now this week's Dark Sky Fact. Last week, the International Dark Sky Association announced two new dark sky parks. Brecon Beacons in South Wales and Death Valley near Tucson, Arizona in the United States. Go visit these pristine skies if you get the opportunity. Now let's start from Gemini, more towards overhead. Hopping across the second through fourth magnitude feet of the twins, turn as if you're heading back to Beta Monocerotis after passing Xi Geminorum. Just a half of a finder scope field of view away, but returning into Monoceros is 4.7 magnitude, 15 Monocerotis, easily seen with binoculars. Look for this cluster of stars around that one that William Herschel first noted back in 1784 that formed the Christmas tree cluster, with 15 as the trunk or base. Using a telescope, there's more to see here, though it takes dark skies and larger optics to see not only the additional stars, but the dark cone nebula that is part of this young OB association of stars. Now continue on that Xi Geminorum 15 Monocerotis line. Half a binocular field from 15, there's a unique sixth magnitude star. This is Plaskett's star, named for Canadian astronomer John Stanley Plaskett, who discovered its binary nature in 1922. Very few stars have proper names like this. It is impossible for us to split the two stars individually because these hot O-class stars make for one of the closest, and importantly, most massive binary star systems. Unlike Beta Monocerotis A at 14,000 years for its orbit, this pair orbits each other in just over 14 days, in an orbit smaller than that of Venus around the Sun. And here's the really astounding thing. Between the two stars, they have a mass of over 100 of our suns. Check out this seemingly benign, quiet star system, which is also not far from the Rosette Nebula and NGC 2244. And here's an observing tip. Viewing double stars often requires good optics and a steady sky. Make sure your telescope is cooled to outdoor ambient temperature and view when the stars are at or near the meridian for best viewing. Jupiter increases the speed of its prograde motion, passing above two sixth magnitude stars this week. The moon grazes past the first magnitude spica on the morning of the second, then visits the still rising Saturn on the third and achieves last quarter phase on the fourth. That's all for this week. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller wishing you clear and dark skies.